Hi, I'm Tom with the Wild Cares Hungry Owl Project. We're here today to build a barn owl nesting box. This is a fairly easy project that can be done in about a day using basic uh, carpentry skills and basic carpentry tools. Uh, one of the things, first things you're going to have to do is get the plans. The plans can be downloaded from our website, hungryowls.org. First, let's look at the tools we need to get together to build this project. Basically, pretty simple, standard uh, homeowner carpentry tools. You're going to need a circular saw, a saber saw, a decent drill, and of course safety equipment, as well as our plans. A table saw is handy for this project, uh, but it's not really necessary. A lot of people don't have it. So we're going to try and build this whole thing without uh, using a table saw. Now let's look at the supplies you're going to need for this project. The supply list is well spelled out in the plans. Basically it consists of one half inch CDX plywood. That's exterior grade plywood. Takes half a sheet per box. That's only the box itself. That doesn't include a sunroof. If it's going to be an exposed location, it's going to need a sunroof. And that's another two foot by two foot piece for the sunroof. I usually make two boxes uh, cut two boxes out of one sheet of plywood, so I do two at a time. You're also going to need about eight feet, or excuse me, 12 feet of two by two lumber for the framing, and then the hardware. You're going to need about uh, roughly uh, 70 or 80 one and a five eighths inch deck screws. You're going to need a couple of three inch or two inch uh, strap hinges. You're going to need two of the one and a half or two inch uh, butt hinges. You're going to need four screw eyes, and then for the sunroof, you're going to need four uh, three-inch long carriage bolts with uh, nuts and washers and so on. Now we get all our material together, we're ready to start building. All right, now we can cut some wood. Uh, I've already I went ahead and cut all the plywood out. I did this before, I actually knew I was going to make this video. But cutting the plywood is pretty straightforward. You lay it all out, use a cutting plan, mark, measure, and label everything before you cut. And then it's just a matter of making simple straight cuts with your circular saw. The front piece where the owls come in and out uh, requires some special attention. Uh, you have to have a hole. Uh, I made this template some time ago. Uh, is mark the opening two and a quarter inches down, like so. Take a drill to make an entry cut. Then you use your saber saw to cut a circle. The opening cut is not very smooth, but we will sand everything down thoroughly before we put the whole thing together. Now comes a tricky part. It needs to have three grooves here, about a quarter of an inch, or about, excuse me, about an eighth of an inch thick on inside and outside. That's so the owls can climb in and can climb out. This cut is easier, easier done on a table saw. Uh, if you don't have a table saw, it can be done with a circular saw. It just requires a great deal of uh, patience. So what I do is put that down, uh, clamp some guides, measure it first, make sure I know where the guides are going to be. Then I set the blade on the circular saw at an eighth of an inch. You might want to check it first on a piece of scrap wood to make sure that it's, uh, it's the right depth. Uh, there's three lines on the inside, three lines on the outside, and they're staggered by half an inch so that we don't have any weakness in the box. So then very carefully, you try and keep it against the guide, uh, constant downward pressure, uh, and see what you can do. Not bad. It wandered a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. The owls don't care. Uh, and then we'll do two more cuts like that. Again, if you have a table saw, it'd be a lot smoother, but this is okay. Now we have the plywood cut out. It's time to cut out the two by two framing. This is pretty straightforward for the most part. 
uh, measure and mark everything as you've done before, then just cut. Some of the pieces uh, uh, require a 10% bevel uh, across the top. So just take your saw, set it at 10 degrees, and make a cut. One of the cuts require a 10 degree bevel across the top. Uh, again, easier done with a table saw, but uh, we can do it right. Circular saw, if we're careful. So I just measured a, a, a cutting line there about uh, half an inch in, uh, and we'll just cut it with the bevel, being very careful to keep even pressure. Again, and just cut that off. There's a heavy degree bevel. Okay, now we're done cutting out all the wood. Uh, it's time for the fun part to start putting the box together. Okay, now we have everything cut out. We're ready to start assembling. We'll start with the bottom. I have the bottom piece and the uh, framing all ready to go. Uh, my screws, I like to use these 1 and 5 8 inch deck screws with a star head on them. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to drive because it won't slip. It's also to have, you have one of these. You put the screw in there with the, with the bit and you just drill and go. Alright, let's get started. So we just load a screw, line it up, drive it in. Put another one. There are holes. There is. There's always going to be some tear out and splinters there. You have to take some coarse sandpaper and make sure you get all of these holes smooth, so it don't. So it won't bother the owls any. Uh, anyhow, that's the bottom. Now we'll do the rest of the box. 
Now, for the rest of the assembly, it's handy to have a uh, backdrop, like it's a wall or a bench or something, so that you can shove the base against it and work against it. So next, we do the back. Same process. install the, uh, the pieces of the framing that we had the 10% bevel. Make sure the 10% bevel is right there. And that's the side. Now we're going to repeat for the other side and the front and we'll make the basic box. Okay, I went ahead and installed the other side, installed the front framing members. Notice how they're half an inch there to allow for the front. I put in the top, top of the front, it's in place. Now we have to install the flap. The flap has to open to be cleaned out, so you need to make sure it, it opens freely. You may have to sand it down a little bit or trim it to get it to work, but it, it needs to open. Then, uh, hinges, two hinges, inch and a half hinges. Uh, it's important to use half inch screws. The screws that, they, that it comes with is probably going to be too long. So you need to buy some half inch screws so it doesn't go all the way through our half inch lumber. So we just, place, use these screw eyes. It's going to be one on each side. And they have to go into this framing member right there. One there and one over there. So, making sure they've got to get that member under there. It's a 
good idea to make another, make the cut through the half inch panel a little bit wider. Uh, make it a little bit easier to get it in there. And then you screw that in. That'll hold it firmly in place. I'll put one on the other side here in a little bit. Uh, and that's all there is to the flap. Uh, now we'll move on and install the roof. Okay, now we're going to attach the roof. To do this, simply turn the box upside down on the roof panel. We're going to attach it with these three inch long screws, or hinges. Remember to use the half inch screws for the roof itself because it's only half an inch. But against this, uh, the body itself, we're drilling into the framing. So you can use as long a screws as you want. Okay, we, we've attached the roof with the hinges. We've also attached the 10% the, the 10, 10 degree bevel piece across here. So it all fits together very nicely. Now to hold this roof down, we're going to use the same screw lines that we used before. As before, measure it, make sure it's going to be right into the center of, a, of one of the frames. Beat for the other side, and then we have our hold downs. Sunroof simply bolts onto the top of this thing using spacers, two, uh, two by two inch spacers to provide a little bit of airflow. So the best way to do this is to put it on, belt it on a piece of two by two. That provides a little bit of gap underneath it so that you can access those screw eyes to open and close it. Then you center it like so, once it's centered, clamp it down. Mark out where to drill the holes uh, per the instructions and use a 3 8 inch drill and simply drill the holes out. And once we've completed all that, when we assemble it with these, these spacers, We'll have a nice sun. But right, now our box is done and we're ready to paint. Uh, before we paint, make sure you take sandpaper, make sure all the uh, edges are smooth, no splinters. Check the inside to make sure no screws are poked through in order to avoid any kind of sharp uh, points inside. Uh, the paint we use is a exterior flat latex zero box paint, so it has no owners. Uh, we use a gray, kind of a gray green for the body. Uh, the, the box, the sunroofs can be a little bit lighter, a lighter gray, uh, not white because whites get too reflective or it can actually scare the birds away. Uh, I paint uh, the front of the box only, not inside, but also these edges here. Uh, I, I paint the hinges too because it's easier and we don't want any bright reflective surfaces that might scare the owls. So you do that, it takes two coats of paint, let's get started. Well, here's our completed owl box. Two coats of paint on the outside. Sunroof's been attached, ready to go. All you're ready to do now is hang it. Uh, for hanging information, you can get uh, instructions on our website, hungryowls.org. Hopefully, in the next breeding season, you'll have a, a family of owls of your own. Happy building.